Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu hayyakum Allah jami'an From the important tenets of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is to refute the people of desires in bid'ah and to refute disbelief and this is done with justice as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-adl and he commands with justice so the, the minhaj of ahl al-haq wa sunnah wa al-hadith wa al-athar is to speak about people with justice not with oppression not criticizing people based on their nationality their race or ridiculing people but instead it's based on the criterion of the haq based on the truth and when you look at ahl bid'a from their sifat from their characteristics of the hizbiyin people and and the takfiriyin are amongst the the hizbis uh the takfiriyin are a hizb from amongst the hizbiyun so it means you have many different groups Many people have divided into sects and to cliques and jama'at and each one is pleased with what they call to, meaning they call to themselves, they call to their hizbiyah, they call to their ideology. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ he says, hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fi kitab al-kareem, kullu hizbi ma ladayhim farihun. That every group is happy or pleased with what they're upon, what they have with them. Meaning that the groups in the sects, if you look at, and we break that down, and we look in the context of our contemporary reality. If you look at Jama'at al-Tabliq, they're pleased with the, their khuruj, their tenets of their particular uh, minhaj or methodology, and they're pleased with their scholars, their scholars and their ideology and the way they give da'wah, regardless of whether it is adherent to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, you'll find that Akhwan and Muslimin, that they're happy and pleased with what they're upon, upon their political ideology and their reform movement for change in uh, the various societies and their underground or their ideology of having the bay'ah and revolting and so on and so forth all of the other tenets of their menhaj or methodology likewise you'll find that from the takfiriyin from their groups they're pleased with rejoicing in the fall of other muslims in de declaring other muslims to be disbelievers that they actually come together to speak about governments they come together to rejoice and speak about and take people out of the fold of islam that's what they enjoy that is a part of the, w you, you don't see them engaging in other aspects of islam you know tawheed and sunnah but rather you see them mainly debating and arguing about who's a disbeliever and who's not a disbeliever. This one did this mistake, so they must have left the fold of Islam. What do you say about the leaders? What do you say about ruling about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law? What do you, all they are is engaged in controversy, but you don't see them calling to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the method of the salaf in its totality. And so what I wanted to, I thought it would be useful and beneficial to read some fawaid from one of our ulama, Sheikh Abdullah Obeylan, half of Allah Ta'ala, one of our ulama of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, who lives in Hail, Saudi Arabia, and who is the Sheikh of uh, one of my very close mashayikh, Sheikh Saeed uh, bin Halal, half of Allah Ta'ala. And this is very important because he, he's emphasizing the importance and the importance of having justice, of being just when you criticize. So he says, Yajib ala al mutakallam fi rijal. He said that it is an obligation upon the one who speaks about men, meaning speaks, who criticizes individuals, whether they are uh, criticizing them and looking at them and analyzing them to see if they are adhering to the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to refute their... Uh, mistakes and their methodologies which go against the sunnah 
of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or that are outside of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So then he said, and yukun master kalamihim min ilm bil haq wa ghayatuhu wa nasiha lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasoolihi wa li ikhwanihi al muslimin. A beautiful, beautiful statement. And this shows the difference between the madhab of ahl haq versus the madhab of ahl batil. When you look at people like Faisal Jamaiki, or Abu Qatada Filistini, or many of the other contemporary takfiris, and even the ones from the past, you'll see they don't speak with justice. All they do is speak about people in the most horrendous of ways. There's never in any kind of, um, any kind of insaf, any kind of, 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 of justice and, and balance in their speech. It's a very extreme way of analyzing uh, the reality. So what did the Sheikh say? Because he said, he said that uh, as far as, he said it's an obligation upon the one who wants to speak about uh, uh, individuals that they, their reference point and their speech is based on knowledge, bil haq, knowledge of the truth. And that their intention, their ghaya, you know, their, 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 their purpose is advice for Allah, for his book, for his messenger, and their brothers amongst the Muslims. So this is the difference between Ahla Haq and Ahla Batil. Most of the has been Ahla Batil, they will spend their time speaking about individuals in order to glorify themselves, in order to bring themselves up, prop themselves up, instead of bringing out the truth, instead of Idhar al Haq. They're, they're not concerned about that. And you'll find that if you make, if you really analyze and you look at, think about all the Hizbi groups and all the people even who claim Salafiyya, look at why they're speaking about someone. When the, what is the politics of what they're, they're speaking about? When are they, they taking the opportunity to beat someone down and to criticize someone and take someone off the sunnah? It's very politically motivated. And often it's in order to raise themselves up in the eyes of others, or in the eyes of certain scholars, or whatever the case may be, which is Hezbiyah. So, Ahl Haq, then he says, وَإِنْ جَعْلَ الْحَقْ تَبْعًا لِلْحَوَى فَسَدَ قَلْبْ وَالْعَمَلْ He said that if you make the truth to where it follows your desires, or follows desires, this will destroy the heart, and it destroys Deeds. Analyze that. Think about that. Ponder on that. That if you make the haq conforming to your desires, instead of your desires conforming to the haq, which is what Islam calls us to, you'll see a big difference. You see a difference. And that's why you have a whole min, uh, a minhaj difference between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Batil and the Hizbiyin because they are usually when they make istilal, when they look to the text and they try to get a dilla, that they already have an ideology, they already have a madhab, they already have an orientation, they already have a way of thinking, they already have a, a hizbi tariq, uh, you know, path. They already have a way and a particular creed that they're supporting, so they're scrambling to the text to support their ideology. Instead of going to the text and their aqidah being formed based on the book and the sunnah and the, and the madhab of the salaf. So that's a difference with istidlal and that's a difference with minhaj between ahl sunnah and ahl bid'ah. And then the shaykh said, he mentioned an ayat to illustrate this point. He said, قال الله تعالى ولو اتبع الحق أهواءهم لفسدت سموات والأرض ومن فيهن. الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم في سورة المؤمنين سورة المؤمنون. He says سبحانه. He says that if they made uh, the truth in accordance with their desires, meaning that they 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 based and consider to the truth to be what's in accordance with their desires, then this would have 
uh, destroyed or caused spread wickedness in the heavens and the earth and what is and with the, those contained in it, letting us know that following our desires without the the text, our desires should be in. We're we're trying to work on our desires and conform our desires to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not the other way around. Not picking and choosing ayat and hadith to cause wickedness in the earth. Look at ISIS. Look at Faisal. Look at all these tekfiri groups and all these uh, wicked shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn and what they are calling to. Wallahu musta'an. Then he says, and he mentions another ayat, وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمِنْ مَنْ خَلَقْنَا أُمَّةٌ يَهْدُونَ بِالْحَقِّ وَبِهِ يَعْدِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم in Surah Al-A'raf, he says, and from those whom we created is a nation that is given that guides to the truth and guides with it or, or and with it they are uh, they arbitrate and they are just look at that that is that's a very powerful ayat that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear not only he is, he's the creator of the heavens and earth but he has made those who are guided and who guide others and they guide them with justice instead of oppression and oppressing people and causing wickedness. This is different than Ahl al-Batl. This is how Ahl al-Sunnah differs with Ahl al-Batl. And that's why we need to be on justice. So then he said, the Sheikh said, he said, Well, Adl, Aslu kulu khair, wal dhum, wal jahil, Aslu kulu shar, wallahu ta'ala, arsala rasuluhu bil huda, wa deen al haq. وَأَمْرُهُ أَنْ يَعْدِلْ بَيْنَ الطَّوَائِفِ وَلَا يَأْتَبَ الْهَوَى أَحَدْ مِنْهُمْ Then the Shaykh, he mentions, he said, justice is the asl. Uh, or, I'm sorry, he said, justice is the asl, it's the origin of all good. And uh, 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 oppression, which is the opposite of justice, and ignorance is the origin of all evil. And he said that Allah the Almighty sent his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with guidance and with the deen of the truth. And he commanded with it. And he was, he ruled and was just between the various groups by ruling by this and not by following the desires. So it shows us it's imperative that we remember to adhere to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj of the Salaf and that we try to avoid those various groups and sects. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, If tarakat al-Yahud al-Itta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al-Nasara al-Thnatayn wa sab'in firqa, wa sataftariku hathi umma la thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fin nar ila wahida kulla man hiya ya Rasulullah, qala man kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi wa ashabi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, the Jews will break into 70 uh, sects, the Christians 71 sects. My woman is 70, uh, the, 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 the Jews in the 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my woman is 73 sects, all of them. Kullahan fin naar al all of them in the fire except one. Then they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and my, uh, my companions are upon. That's what we want to be upon. The companions were not tikfiriyun. The khawarij were. So look to your methodology. Look at what you're calling to. Look at what you're being invited to. Are you being just with the people? Are you making being just when you judge people? These are questions that we have to reserve for ourselves and we need to practice. And may Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us of our many, many sins and bless us to be just. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.